So now let's move to Esther Pizarro and Marcus uh, Schroll. When I saw their uh, artworks, uh, I said, wow, it's amazing <laughs> what they do. And uh, so now they will show some of these uh, artworks, uh, their projects. Uh, Esther is a visual artist, researcher, and professor, professor uh, at the Universidad Europea of Madrid. And Marcus is a visual artist, photographer, and a creative technologist. So you together, you are an example of uh, a star team, science, technology, and arts. Okay. <laughs> so is uh, for this reason is very interesting uh, to to hear uh, your uh, uh, your projects. Uh, so they worked, uh, you worked uh, in, in the last years on many projects were uh, with the topic maps. So please, the, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. And, and thanks a lot, Massimiliano, for the invitation to be part of this uh, Star Talks in Geneva. It's for us a, a real honor. So um, as you told, we are Marcus Roll and Esther Pizarro. And our studio is focuses on the creation of our artistic projects, um, of an artistic project that combine art, science, and technology. Our project uh, incorporates, um, whenever possible, interdisciplinary teams with professionals from the fields of architecture, geography, design, and technology. Can you see, can everybody see the, the screen? Yes, can we can see, see, we can yes. see. Okay, can thank you. Perfect, only to confirm. Yes. Um, yeah. Mobility maps, connectivity between cities for physical and digital data mapping, sustainability geographies or cartographies uh, that show environmental emergency are some of the topics covered in Esther Pizarro Studio's latest installations, in which we research the complexity of contemporary society. A map is a knowledge tool that translates both visible and non-visible aspects of the territory, landscape, ecosystem, or concept that it explores or analyzes. In recent decades, uh, today society has moved from a hierarchical knowledge model based on a tree structure to one based on a rhizomatic and network principle. A map is a representation of reality, regardless of the medium, the scale or the data reincorporate. The maps represent a specific gate, that of the cartographer who decided what information to reflect on it. A map is an exercise in introspection. Maps allows exploration and analysis of the territory, but also a subjective exploration of the subject. The viewer interventions is key because he or she uh, is the one who deciphers and interprets the codes presented on the map. The map following the Les and Guattari has a rhizomatic structure. Both authors tell us about the principle of cartography and tracing. The purpose of the tracing is the description of a state, the visualization of intersubjective relationships or the exploration of a hidden unconscious. The maps that does not reproduce an unconscious close it on itself, it builds it. The map is open, connectable in all its dimension. Contrary to tracing, a map always has multiple, multiple entries. According to their indication, it is always necessary to reposition the tracing on the map. In this way, it will begin its rhizomatic reading. Map and cartography allows us to understand the complexity and overwhelming information that our environments has in the middle of the Anthropoceno era. 
If we can, as the less advisors, we should overlap the map on the tracing to build a new reality, a complex cartography. The complex connectivity of our times requires new tools for analyze and exploration. The use of technology implements and enriches the construction of new cartographies capable of representing the intangible of their narratives and the invisible of re their representation, introducing a rhizomatic reading on their complexities. The following installation produced by Esther Pizarro Studio are based on this conceptual principle, are on and are enriched by the use of new technology that allows us to represent and interpret the complexity of the associative narrative. Okay, starting with Cloudscape. Cloudscape interprets the city. Cloudscape interprets the city as a complex system, a network of nodes, links, and connections capable of visualizing the multiple layers that it envelopes. We need to consider new methods of analysis, modeling, and simulation that reflect the increasing complexity and interconnected nature of our times. As we have previously analyzed, a complex system is defined by a large number of interconnected elements that fluctuate dynamically in their areas of action. Networks are symbols of autonomy, flexibility, collaboration, diversity, and multiplicity. We move and live in networks the present city is a network city. This multimedia and sound installation understands the landscape as a living organism, a fragile and crystalline entity connected to itself through lines of light that appear and disappear, enhancing the dynamic and at the same time intangible character of the territory. Points, lines, and surfaces that represent cities, physical and digital connection access and environmental systems. Suspended in the air, crystalline nodes of different sizes represent the 10 demarcations that make up the area called Diamante del Caribe and Santander in Colombia. The installation is part of a collaboration with the Metropolitan Foundation that has been extensively investigating the cis Colombian territory exploring and diagnosing its potentialities. Based on the study carried out by this institution, the artistic proposal filters graphics and data produced in an artistic visualization that is sustained by the previous conceptual research. Analyzing the installation from top to bottom, we find a first level that represents the territory's blueprint in the shape of circular disks which describes the isochronos of each urban core hanging from this, pardon, hanging from these circles, the geometric and crystalline nodes focus on the function of the area of influence of each city in an abstract reading. Pyramidal prisms of borough silicate works completes this, this configuration as a hint to the diamond figure. The diamond is a metaphor used by the Metropolis Foundation to describe the new scale of cities, a raw territory that is being polished by different agents, including human knowledge. Electroluminescent wires arise from the vortices of the pyramidal prisms, activating or disactivating their light according to the audio of the installation. These cables represent links and relationships between the different cities of our landscape and network. Graffiti allows them to form a tangle of inverted arcs that soothe 10 class nodes. The whole is framed in a sheet of water, which gives us back the real cartography of the territory, since all of all the composition is intentionally inverted in a specular way. Two layers of sound interaction are completing the installation. The first is a multiple sound landscape surrounding the installation, activating the electroluminescent wire. This part is realized with amplifiers, loudspeakers, Arduino, and sound sensors. The second layer is activated by a Kinect camera, recognizing people and activating the sound of a heartbeat as a symbol of the human presence. 
now we are showing the video. Liquid mapping connected to represents how the Spanish geography is connected with the rest of the planet through the submarine cables. 99% of internet traffic circulates through a network of cables that weaves the seabed of the ocean and allows the transmission of data in real time. As a network of underwater arteries, this aquatic mapping imperceptible to our eyes works as the grid information highway of the 21st century. Parting from the geographic limits of the Spanish territory, a research has been carried out with the purpose of filtering the data that has historically made it possible for our country to be connected with the rest of the world since the arrival of the internet. All the data has been extracted from the open source submarine cable map, which is a free and a regular update resource from telegeography. This platform allows to share by cable, landing, country, and year of implantation. The result is a large installation of glass tube with colored electroluminescence cable circulating inside according to the year of implantation. The lights fluctuates intermittently, interacting with audio that simulates data emission. The floor installation is connected to a diagram that runs through the entire vertical canvas of the room and show us the temporal evolution by years of activity in this liquid cartography through light screen of lines and data. These 10 screens represents the years where there has been construction activity of submarine cables in our country and builds the timeline that runs through the walls of the gallery. The electroluminescence wires are controlled by Arduino sensors and microphones. A sound landscape is completing the whole installation, introducing the viewer to an almost aquatic and metallic scenery. Through the microphones, the sound activates the electroluminescence wire simulating the data flows of the submarine cables. Now we are gonna watch a very brief uh, video. Thank you. 
The, but the sustainability of our planet is seriously threatened. Among the risks that question the fragile balance of our ecosystems are the increase in the greenhouse effect, the destruction of ozone layer, and the erosion, desertification and destruction of the forest. Quantifying through data, the impact of these indications help us understand and be able to formulate methods in environmental management. Mapping active fire data is part of an artistic research consisting of a cartographic, dynamic, and interactive visualization of the forest fires that have devastated the Earth's surface during the decade of between 2008 and 2017. Using data extracted from scientific sources, the work makes visible the wounds caused on the Earth's surface by fires that are continuously burning. The exhibition is organized around three main areas. First space welcomes the fuels burning, a visual installation based on a shader mapping in which a Kinect sensor camera captures the body of each person using the skeletal tracking system, creating a visual carpet of generative fires. In the central space is the main core of the project. This sculptural light and interactive installation gathers and three-dimensionally visualizes the data on active fires over the past decade. It is a dot matrix device conceived as a screen of three dimensional pixels, where the dynamic evolution of wildfires during the time frame under investigation is represented by the reflection of the light on the glass. Using clear glass rods, the Earth's planisphere is presented in its azimuthal reaction of geographic coordinates, taking latitude and longitude into account. The different heights of the class interpret by difference in their elevation, the areas with the most wildfire activity, the taller parts, as a whole, the former bar chart. Connected to this central core are 10 structures, which display monthly data and graphics for each year covered, based on three parameters, burnt area, CO2 emissions, and fire count. The striat of variables is constructed three-dimensionally in the form of a datascape, reinforcing its profile by using reflected light effects on the polished metabolic side. The viewer can interact with the, wall, with the core of the installation using a touch screen located on each device, choosing the evolution of fires in a specific year. Light and new technologies are responsible for the project's interactivity and dynamism. Lastly, there is a sound element, which allows viewers to immerse in an enveloping environment of burning forests. The third space contains 10 diagrammatic maps founded on the principle of the Voronoi diagram, a type of generative computational geometry that is based on the concept of Euclidean matrix of distance. Drawing the centroids on the origin of, on the, origin of the fire sources over the NASA image, we generate different geometric patterns. The resulting geometric lattice work on each map gives us an idea of the areas affected by major fires and the grouping or scattering of theodos emissions. The greater the concentration of fires and gases centroids, the more close is the cell. And the crater is a scattering of the fire sources, 
is the large as the size of the resulting area. Installation aims to draw attention to an environmental problem using the visual metaphor that artistic language has to activate sensi sensitivities, consciences, and questions. During the production phase, analog and digital techniques have been used. The physical part of the installation was made by borosilicate glass, wood fiber, LEDs, and metacrylate. The digital manufacturing techniques employed were computer numerical control, CNC, and laser engraving and cutting. A technological component was essential to the installation. It provides dynamism at the time that introduced different narrative layers. By using the pixel mapping technique, it has been possible to obtain a cartographic visualization of fires in the central piece, employing anti pixelator peeling injectors hardware. The interaction the touch screens on the graphic device was achieved using Arduino open source microcontroller boards. We also show for this project a short video. Finally, we will share with you our most recent project, Space Debris Waste Constellation, which is part of an artistic research that analyzes and evidence the huge span of space debris that revolves around the Earth in its four main orbits. The launch of, the, of Sputnik in uh, 1957, Humanity First Satellite, answered a new era in the conquest of outer space, but it also meant the beginning of a new type of pollution invisible to our eyes, space pollution. Since then, our planet has been increasingly surrounded by numerous satellites task, tasked with studying our climate, predicting disaster, helping us answer scientific questions, and keeping us uh, continuously connected and monitored. The useful life of these satellites is threatened by the saturation of objects orbiting the Earth. Accidental collisions between objects orbiting out outer space can produce the risk cloud that moves at great speeds. This debris constellation can spread out and damage additional satellites with a cascading effect a process known as a Kessler syndrome, a greater connectivity, more satellites, and as a consequence, a greater increase in space pollution. Relying on the data 
uh, extracted from scientific sources, the project identifies the 11 powers responsible for the exponential accumulation of space debris, classifies, sorry, and categorize the data and shows how this entire constellation of space debris is distributed in the cosmos. The exhibition is structured around three axes. The first, the conceptual, reveals the data collected and creates graphics that help us to understand it. Each country has been classified based on the four Earth orbit and around the three main categories of space debris. Debris, rocket body, and payload. The main axis of a space debris is made up of, of a large interactive three-dimensional installation that interprets outer space and its four main orbit. A projection of the Earth as, as a center. Around it, 44 circular devices woven with fiber optic and activated by light sensor are distributed. In its upper part, a seven segment display show us the country analyzed, the orbit under study, and the number of objects cataloged in that orbit. This display is activated by a motor motion sensor. A cool white LED spot lightly fits the fiber optic ellipses that show the circular platform. The sensor, the screen, and the LED are controlled by an Arduino Nano. The countries, the countries with the highest incidence in terms of space pollution are identified with an ultrasonic sensor that interacts with the viewer and activates a generative video mapping projection. In the perpendicular projection, projection sorry, of the device, a circular platform made of mirror metacrylate show us the data of that country in the form of a circular graph using layer engraving. The image that the mirror repels on the reverse side of the circular platform is shown as a cosmic constellation of light points. The third axis is made up of a generative video activated by the country with more impact in terms of space pollution. The color of this visual are inspired by the principal color of every country's flag. The data, which fits the, fits the installation, is actualized in real time by APS from different websites. The space conquest has generated great advantages in our planet. Now it's time to add, to assume responsibility and to avoid or control the exponential grow of a space pollution. I look from the disruptive thought that our proposes to one of the biggest challenges of the 20th century, um, of the 21st century, how to control the pollution we produce. We will finish with the video of this installation.
As a conclusion, we are interested in noting that the artistic researches discusses above create a methodological model capable of being applied to different scales, macro, micro, and relational, as well as to different geographical frames. The opportunity offers by the STARS programs as a connection node between art, technology, and companies and institutions involved in innovations enables the creation of new cartographies for art. Thank you very much. Thank you, Esther and Marcus, for showing uh, the topics of maps from uh, so many points of view in the interaction, intersection of uh, art, science, uh, and also a very, very beautiful technology because uh, as I, mentioned before uh, is also very aesthetic point of view very nice artworks at the end and in different contexts because uh, you develop the methodology so you talked of human of water sustainability and all is in, also all is integrated and scaled in micro micro so uh, it's like uh, to see the world, uh, something that is not tangible with, uh, with new, new eyes. <laughs> okay, so I, <clears throat> this is uh, my, my impression. So thank you so much, Esther and Marcus, to be here today with us.